Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here on part three of building the baby's crib. Not sure how much time I'm going to get on this today, but uh, I for sure want to get a few things done. Now that I got this front piece here kind of finished up, I think since I have that bit in the router, I'm going to go ahead and route all the spindles. got the first 26 of them here have been routered there's a, a couple that'll have to be replaced it's like you go through and every so often it'll just start like following the grain down and, it, and it's more than what the uh, than what the router bit will take like you see that one right there it kind of gouged it out so I'll have to replace that one there was also a couple here that were a little warped I'll see if that pulls out now or not but uh, Anyway, these are done, so we'll see how many more we have to make. Well, I'm back out in the workshop this afternoon. And originally with the crib, now, you know, I've got most of the front and back pieces cut. All the ones that, you know, there's some more stuff to do to it, but the majority of it is cut. And on the two sides 
which are, you know, roughly this wide. The top is going to be like this. This is going to be roughly an inch and a half thick. Then it was going to go like this and curve down and then flatten back out again. And then the spindles or slats will come up and against this. And I originally was going to do it like this by gluing these together and then going ahead and cutting that. The only thing is, like with this piece here, I get the red and the white. And if you think about that with it glued, you can clearly see that and it's going to look, I mean, it look okay, but still kind of goofy. But I was going to do it that way because I can cut all that with my jigsaw. And the real correct way to do this is to take and glue these together like this and then come in here, you know, they'd be all the same size, of course, and then cut your your curve like this and come down because then when you're looking the only thing that you're going to see is when you're standing in front of the crib you're going to see this face and then you're going to get layers as you go through the boards long layers that will come up and go flat so but I was limited on what I could do because that would be super hard to cut with the jigsaw and keep that blade straight so today I went out, I looked on Marketplace, and there were several uh, bandsaws. I actually looked last fall for um, at bandsaws, and there weren't too many to choose from. And right now there were several of these. I got a super good deal on this one. I just uh, posted a video on this on the Northern Seclusion channel of my um, Marketplace find of the day. And this was a really good deal, and this allows me to go ahead and cut that curve I want to do and do it the right way you know, going cross grain like that. So now I'm going to take those boards right there and glue those together so I'm thicker and then I'll have to make up another one for the other side. I got the first one all glued up and clamped. And now I'll have to dig out some other boards here out of my pile and uh, get another four of these put together. It's really important when you're gluing boards together that you get every single spot on the board covered with glue because when you uh, you know stack these on top of each other and glue them I mean you could just have a, a you know a line on each side and that board would probably never come apart but the glue is creating thickness between the boards and since I'm going to be cutting through the boards, that would create a gap where that glue, everything will be even.
Well, now we've got the bottom piece cut, not for length, but width and thickness it is. Top piece that has to be cut is done. And one thing, like, you know, I, I picked up this crib for free because we can use the hardware, which is all the bolts and everything, and the spring for the mattress. Now my problem is this piece of stock here, we've got one here, we've got one here, is inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. Well, they use that chipboard, you know, it's not real wood. And, I mean, we've got holes going through it. I'm limited. I Since I'm using this, the hardware, I have to make sure that this is an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. I can't beef this up. Like I said in the beginning, we can beef up the front all we want and the back as long as the bolts are going into it and not through it. Here, it's all going through it. And I've got a hole here and then a half inch below it, I've got a hole right there. That makes this a weak spot. I mean, it's a crib, so not that it's going to get broken, but at the same time, if this is going to get handed down for generations, you have to think about this kind of stuff, because that's where it's going to break if it's going to break. So I'm not comfortable taking a piece of the red cedar just out of one piece and cutting an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter square. First of all, good chance it can warp. Second of all, with all the knots, if anything, if a knot hits in one of these areas, it can be a weak spot. So as much as I hate to do it, I'm actually going to glue two pieces together and then plane it down and just run that seam down here because that's going to make it much, much stronger. I guess I should clarify with that. The reason why I can't make this any bigger is since we are using the original hardware, all the bolts, if I make any of this bigger where the bolts are going through, the bolts are going to end up being too short. That's why I have to stay to this size. With these four here that I'm gluing together, they're out of two different boards. I, I left two of them longer. They're out of one totally separate board than this one. I don't want to put the two boards together that are the same. I want to put one of each. Then any kind of, uh, oh, if they have any crowning or anything that's going to happen, they'll fight against each other and hopefully stay fairly straight. I have all these pieces glued up. I still have to glue up two more of these, but right now, all, I mean, most all my clamps are used. I don't want to use my, I've got some that are, I don't know, four footers or 50 inches. I'm not going to put them on there. And I could probably pull those off already now, but I'll just wait. I just started cutting the pieces that will create that curve along the top of the back of the crib. But it's after 8 o'clock. I need to call it a night. I've had enough of this day. <laughs> I'll see you guys out here another time. Well guys, I'm back out in the workshop. It's actually been a few weeks since I worked on the crib. I did come out here I don't know, a little while back and started cleaning up in that part of the uh, workshop.
and then things just got really busy, and uh, I haven't had a chance to get out here and work in the crib. Needless to say, time is wasting, so it's time to get back moving on this thing and finish up the crib. This jig that I've got here for joining the boards together is the neatest thing ever, but I don't get to use it enough, so I've always got to rethink how it works, and sometimes I need to look at the book, and eventually I get it figured out. So now I'm just trying to lay out the spindles to see if I need to have one directly in the center or if I need to offset them. And instead of doing all the math, I'll just use a little jig and see where we end up. Well, that ends up pretty good. I actually, there's a little ridge right here I have to hit with a sander, so every single one of these is going to gain about a 32nd of an inch, so this will even be a little bit of a bigger gap by the time I get here. But yeah, that's going to be really pretty. I mean, this is looking at the back side even, but uh, that looks nice. The nice thing with this is, this up on top here is the only time I have to jig it here, then I can just face screw it. The problem is down here I don't have to fill these holes, because this is never going to be below the actual crib uh, mattress. Up here though it will be, so I have to fill these, and you can easily go to the store and buy, you know, oak and ash and pine dowels to fit in there. I'm never going to find uh, aromatic cedar, so I'm going to have to just probably put just a regular cedar dowel in there and it'll just be a darker color. But you know, it doesn't matter. The, it still ends up being end grain so it changes the look when you use a hardwood also, but uh, at least I 
have to uh, have it the whole way across. Okay, everyone. Well, that's turning out really cute. I think I'm going to uh, end part three right now. I have a rare opportunity tomorrow. I'm going to be able to work on this crib for most of the day. So I will start part four tomorrow. And that will get us up to the whole thing being built. And then the final will be putting on the finish. I will see you guys on the next video.